What's up jet ski fans? Welcome to another Joel Arsenal YouTube video. In the last one I built a tool, bored out the cylinders on my Kawasaki 1100 triple, reassembled the engine, reinstalled it into the X2, and in this video we are finally going to test it. We are also going to do some tinkering with the Zealtronic CDI, but probably not the sort of tinkering that you guys are looking forward to, and believe me, neither was I. Let's get into it. I'm getting ready to go out to the lake. I've got the X2 loaded on the trailer. When I fire it up, it sounds a little bit weird. It has a hesitation to it. I am very paranoid, so I am going to hook the computer up to it before I leave and see what the map says. Uh, I have bad luck when it comes to this stuff. I am sure that I put the map that Mark sent me in it, but yeah, I don't know. 17 degrees up to 1500 2000 it's at 25 degrees 30,000 it's at 32 ish yeah 32 all right so yes the right map is on it or a map is on it so i'm gonna disconnect here and head to the lake all right, folks, I made it out to Twin Valley Reservoir. Not too much drama before getting here, but uh, my expectations are pretty low this time around. I'm hoping just not to have any major failures. For those of you who didn't see my last video, well, that would have been rebuilding the engine. So the video before that, I guess, was me coming to the lake and yeah, I put the pistons in backwards they snagged on the exhaust port and I wrote my engine that was freshly rebuilt. If this turns out well and the X2 actually gets through this without failing, then we will start uh, focusing a little bit more on tuning and performance. Um, but as for now, I'm just hoping to get through the day without a catastrophic failure. Uh, the Zealtronic CDI is programmable, so I can change some of the tuning, but Mark from Ericsson Machine and Performance has given me the, or he put the uh, programs, the maps into it for two different maps. And so I'm assuming I probably don't need to do anything with them. He probably did way better of a job than I ever could have uh, with all of the research and development that he's done. What I can do is make sure that all of the cylinders are timed the same. So if the crank is even slightly out of phase or yeah, not, perfectly perfectly uh, 120 degrees from each other then you can compensate with the Zealtronic CDI because you can make cylinder one fire uh, yeah you can basically choose where each of the cylinders fire to it so I'm gonna try to get the back up onto the rocks here if we can make sure that we don't get any rocks in the pump that would be awesome Thank <laughs> you. 
sounds like we're gonna have another real disappointing day. Oh man. These waves are not helpful. All right, the bilge pump, is it working? Hopefully we're dry, because it's nothing coming out. Wow, that wind is something else. It'd be good fun if it was working. Looks like we should be prepared for some major disappointment today. I knew it didn't sound right on the table. That's why I hooked the computer up to it, but it sounds like an ignition thing. But it could be, yeah. Could be crankcase volume. I took a lot of material out of the crankcase when I was cleaning them up. This is why you don't change more than one thing at a time, because now I don't know if it's an ignition thing. It sounds, sounds very much like an ignition thing. I joke about not doing a whole lot of things all at once for this exact reason. Ordinarily, when I joke about that, I think to myself, oh, I'll be able to figure it out. If something goes wrong, I'll know if it's ignition or fueling or compression or whatever. But in this case, I have no idea. And that's bad because I did a whole lot of things to this ski. Probably the first thing to do Probably the first thing to do would be either look at the map and see if the map maybe doesn't jive with my porting. It seems that the timing ramps up very, very quickly. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I've never dealt with, I've never had a programmable CDI. I've never dealt with any of that. So I never really paid attention to it. As much as I told myself I was prepared for failure, I was really expecting 
for it to work okay despite it not working on the bench very well not revving very clean it does seem at the rpm where the it seems to rev to like 2000 rpm ish and not even maybe 1500 rpm and then it just kind of falls in its face fairly certain it's not fuel not a fuel issue i've been thinking about it a little bit more just kind of sitting here thinking and whatever it is is happening with all three cylinders so it's not just yeah it's not just dying on one cylinder when it dies whatever is happening is happening on all three cylinders so it's not a coil it's not a plug it's not a carburetor that doesn't get me much closer but it does tell me yeah I was thinking oh maybe it's leaking some water into the cylinder head but it basically did this same thing it did this same thing last time and then broke a ring I feel like anyone watching this video will be like you're an absolute idiot. You had those problems and you didn't bother throwing a timing light on it or even checking to see what it was doing on the bench. All right, now I'm just sitting here thinking, am I actually going to be able to figure it with as many things as I've changed on this? Am I going to be able to figure out? Am I going to be able to pinpoint what it is? I guess if I change the stator and a different CDI and fire it up and it sounds okay. Come with me and we'll have a little look in my electronics bin to see if we have the stuff that we need. Uh, I think I will open up this ladder too before I fall on my face. The luck that I've been having lately, I'll get part way up, this ladder will fall and I will break my nose or cave my face in. It looks like right on top I have, oh no, this is a 750 cover. This, oh, we'll just put this in the exhaust bin for now. This is the skeletonized cover. I believe this is, yes, okay, good. This is one that I've already had on the X2. Uh, I don't know, oh, this was off of the Sea Rat. I believe oh and I cut the wires to yeah hmm that that could work but we'll just set it aside for now and see if we have another one this is a cover off of 650 this is the CDI box from the C rat I believe as far as staters go it looks like I'm gonna have to use the stator that was off of the C rat which wasn't working a hundred percent but it was working, yeah, it was working well enough to know if the Zealtronics is doing anything funny, or hopefully, anyway. I've got the hose hooked up to it. I'm gonna go turn the water on in just a second, and then we'll fire it up and see if it behaves any better with this uh, CDI and different stator. Even if it works perfectly fine this way, well, I guess we'd have to take it out to the lake to actually know that, but even if it sounds perfectly fine, we still don't know if it is uh, perhaps the CDI itself, the stator coil, trigger coil. Um, I did some modifications to the stator coil, so maybe there's some weird stuff. Um, yeah, who knows, who knows?
Well, I'm not sure if you guys can pick up on that, but it definitely sounds better. When I'm running it with the Zealtronics and the other stator, you can hear some weird burbly kind of backfiring noises every now and then. It just does some really weird stuff. And there is a bog and it seems to be misfiring down low, like at low RPM, it was bang, 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 bang where this is a nice smooth idle. Well, as smooth as you get for a three cylinder two stroke. In order to narrow the problem down a little bit further, I've decided to reinstall the Zealtronic CDI and leave the stator off of the C-Rat installed. If it works better, then we know the problem was with the stator and we can do something about that. If it starts working poorly, then we know that the problem is something to do with the Zealtronic CDI or at least something in the e-box. I've got everything installed and I'm ready to test fire it. I gotta pull all this junk off here first, I guess, so that it doesn't vibrate and fall on the ground. All right, so it is a problem with the CDI, not with the stator. A few hours ago, I got off the phone with Mark from Ericsson Machine and Performance. He was very helpful. He told me basically to stop taking shortcuts and stop making assumptions, to actually use a dial indicator and mark off where top dead center was for each cylinder and then put some other marks. He normally works on this engine inside of a STX or ZXI hull, which gives you access to the coupler. So you put the marks on the coupler but I have actually done it to my flywheel, which we'll take a look at in a second here. So I've got a dial indicator. This goes into the spark plug hole. You turn the engine over until you find top dead center. In order to do that, I've made this adapter out of a spark plug and that fits on over my dial indicator fairly snug. And so I can thread this into the spark plug hole. The piston comes up, touches this, and I can see exactly where top dead center is. So what I did is marked off where the top dead center mark is. And then in this clip, you can see I have the flywheel removed in my lathe and I'm using a, a degree wheel on the backside of the lathe to mark off these marks at every five degrees up to 35 degrees. So I've got one here at basically top dead center. And then I've got five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 and 35. Here you can see we're off about, I don't know, probably a degree or two from the factory mark. So it is a good idea to make your own indication marks if you're gonna do this. So let's see if that helps us. I have 35 degrees of timing marks. And when it goes from, yeah, whatever it is, when it goes from the startup sequence to the actual map, The timing goes right off the charts. I can't even see the marks anymore. This angle is crazy. Like in order to get it to match, in order to get it to match, I'm going to need to, I'm going to need to go, let's see. It's at 68, 550, so I need another 10. So I've got to go 78. There we have it. 
It takes 78 degrees of static angle to make the marks line up. That tells us something, hopefully. I will be the first person to admit that I'm not very good at math, but I've done some calculations and this is starting to make sense and I'm not sure why 48 degrees would be in the uh, CDI because it seems to me like 78 or 75-ish seems to be a number that makes a whole lot more sense. I'll try to talk you guys through my reasoning here and Hopefully it makes a little bit of sense to you guys, but it probably won't and maybe I'm completely wrong So we have the trigger coil here and there's little bumps on the flywheel We'll call it them uh, reluctors reluctor bumps. So the way it works is the start of the reluctor Passes by as soon as the trigger coil sees that it tells the CDI to fire but the CDI has programmed in a delay the trigger coil is encountering the start of the reluctor lump and the actual top dead center is 123 to 125 degrees later i haven't taken a extremely accurate measurement but the trigger coil is here the reluctor lump is there, that's where it's picking up, and the top dead center for that cylinder, cylinder number one, is actually here. So, 123 degrees we'll call it, and then if we take the angle between the trigger coil and where we actually see through this window, that is 48 degrees. So the angle between here and where we actually see is 48 degrees. If we take 123 and we subtract that 48 degrees, that gives us 75 degrees, which is really close to 78 degrees, especially considering, well, one, my math, and two, how accurately I've actually taken these measurements. What is worrying about this whole thing is that the manual quite clearly says to not set the static angle any further than necessary and that you should avoid setting it past 45 unless absolutely necessary. And I would have to set it all the way to 78. Looks like I might get to use those jet skis here in a minute. Holy cow. Look at the water coming down off my roof. I am now going to try to attempt to explain to you guys how this situation got so far out of control. Let me start by saying that the correct static angle for this engine is 75 degrees. I now know that because I contacted Zealtronics directly. They sent me a map and told me that 75 degrees was the correct angle. Now, I purchased this CDI way back at the end of 2021, I believe. So people 
uh, in this situation. People uh, related, involved in this situation have learned a lot, I'm sure, in the past couple of years, as I have. I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody, but I am going to explain to you guys a little bit about how this got so confusing. So a big part of the problem is that the Zealtronics manual, I believe a lot of it is copy and pasted from other Zealtronics manuals. And I took it for granted that this manual would be built for this CDI. The other big problem was that this CDI was sent to me again at the end of 2021 and it had a 48 degree static angle programmed into it uh, with two different maps. The manual tells you not to advance the timing beyond 45 degrees of static angle, if at all possible, because it will make it, uh, it says it will make the advance unstable. I'm not 100% sure why that is or exactly what it means, but it says not to advance the timing beyond 45 degrees if possible. I did the calculations several times and kept coming up with a number around 75 or 78 degrees for the static angle, but because the manual said not to set it past 45 and because Mark had set it to 48, I kept looking elsewhere. I tried all sorts of things like different flywheels, changing the stator, changing the trigger coil, uh, I thought it was interference, so I moved the CDI to different locations. I tried extra grounds. I tried moving grounds to different places. I tried all sorts of different things, and none of those things worked because in the end, it was supposed to be set to a 75 degree static angle. I now know that because I contacted Zealtronics directly. They sent me a map and told me in the email that it is actually supposed to be 75 degrees. So with that said, the X2 now sounds a whole lot better. In upcoming videos, we're gonna do some testing on it where it actually works. And then we're gonna start doing some modifications. Those of you who have watched my last videos will know that I am currently working on a silly cylinder head. So you can look forward to that. If you don't wanna miss it, be sure to subscribe. If you liked the video, remember to leave a thumbs on. If you liked the video, remember to leave a thumbs up on it. And that is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Well folks, it looks like Dustin is my good luck charm. He gave me some tips on uh, adjusting my carburetors.